Hey guys, we're back. I noticed it with this connection here. Let me know if you guys can hear and see us again clearly. make sure everything is okay that I didn't lose Scott again hey Javon <laughs> what's up Matt I'm just making sure I didn't lose Scott I know he was somewhere else make sure he is okay and you guys can join in and ask uh, more questions as well oh, he said loud and clear good <laughs> Make sure everything is okay. So we're just going to continue um, the conversation. Let's see if he's back on. I know we got disconnected, so we were talking about um, housing. <laughs> Javon said, just here getting the nuggets. Yeah, we were just talking about, you know, I was just saying for myself, you know, housing, what I should do. Because I do want to purchase a home myself. And I just want to prepare you know, myself, and he's, the last thing he was talking about is the fact that people are actually out here uh, buying homes and stuff. So I just want to see if I can get him back on here. He's probably still on the other uh, video. <laughs> he's probably still on there, so I'm going to see if he comes back on. Make sure he's okay first, so... Let me see. Scott, are you there? I see we have viewers are coming back on. I see your brother's on. What's up, Chris? <laughs> okay, let me make sure. Okay, there he go. He's coming back. Let me make sure he's there before we continue on. Scott, are you there? Yes, I'm back. Okay, oh, no, I, I see the ceiling. <laughs> oh, give me one second. Okay. No, yeah, I was trying to get everything back guys. together. Yeah, no. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions for him while we're getting to, I guess, part two of the conversation? <laughs> yes. It is good to know that the housing market is hot right now because I do hear people complain all the time, you know, saying that the housing market is terrible and it's not a good time, you know, to purchase a house. And you're saying it is a good time. It's always a good time in my eyes. There's always a deal <laughs> out there. Yes, um, that's true. I always can find something or make something happen. Right. Now, what's the, what's the difference between a buyer's market and seller's market? Because I heard you mention that before online. So, you got your it's, you got it together. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah, you, gotta just, the, you gotta get the professor thing going. So I'll let you yeah, do your yeah. thing. <laughs> so there's what's called the absorption rate. Okay. So the absorption rate is the amount of sales in a month. Mm -hmm. the, the sales per month divided by the number of houses on the market. Okay. So if it's a high absorption rate, then it's a seller's market which means sellers can are selling houses faster. Mm -hmm. If houses aren't selling, then it's a buyer's market. So okay. then buyers can buy houses for cheaper. <clears throat> okay. That's, that's a good way to, you know, break it down. Because I, I heard you mention that before, so that's why I wanted you just to explain. Oh, Javon says, I'm going to get a home in uh, Florida. So that's going to be a good look, Javon, for you as well. Because I'm sure if it's, it's hot, in Jersey, well, it's literally hot in, in Florida, but, <laughs> but the market is going to be hot. So how does one find the value of a house? Do they have to, like, go do listings? Like, what is the best route for someone, you know, looking? So what I'm finding is that everybody's using websites now, like Zillow. Right. right. And, like and mm -hmm. what these websites do is take an average of a huge range and give mm -hmm. you a number. You can't value a home simply by looking at the other homes that you've never seen, mm -hmm. that home that you haven't seen, wow. and give it a number. That's impossible. Mm -hmm. What you have to do is go to a professional like myself or like you, 
in the future? Yes, yes. <laughs> we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Yes, y'all. I'm tired. I'm tired of not owning. It's just like there's nothing better than owning your own. I don't care yeah. what it is, whether it's your car, your house, your cat, whatever. It's just nothing like owning your own. <laughs> it's nothing like having your own. So, yeah. so it's good. That's really you know good to know. So why do people need an agent? Like, what are your like top reasons why people should hire a real estate agent? It's just like any other industry. If your car is broken down, will you right. try to change your engine? Well. You, you want to go to a professional <laughs> because you don't want to make things worse. And That's especially, true. When, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially when you're dealing with legal matters, um, a lot of these right. contracts yeah. can have a lot, a lot of consequences that you may not know mm. about. Mm. And you know, it's good to have a team. Like when you have professional, like. Uh, real estate agent, they usually have a team yeah. of professionals that they actually use all the time because they trust them. So you have to have the trust factor and you have to have the knowledge. So when you're going mm -hmm. through contracts or going buying, buying a house, you know, mm -hmm. you might think that you're going to save $20,000, right. but in reality, if you had an agent, he might have got that $20,000 knocked down anyway for something mm -hmm. wrong with the house or just brought something right. wrong with the house. So it's always better to go with a professional rather than try to do it right. yourself. Or your cousin or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what <I mean. laughs> So what, is, what are some things they, that a, a buyer should be aware of when they're looking for a home? If, like, say if they didn't have an agent. Definitely, the first thing you want to do is find a good agent. Okay. But, you know, one of the things that people don't notice about mm -hmm. when they are looking for a home, it's what's called a flood zone. Mm hmm so flood zones can range you from a yearly basis about $4,000 extra in insurance that you may not have known about. So if you buy a house that's in a flood zone, you're spending right. $4,000 a year that's going towards nothing but insurance and you didn't mm. even know about it. So that's probably coming wow. off your mortgage itself. It's one major thing yeah. that you know, having a, profession, a professional would know, okay, this right. is a flood zone or not. But if you're walking around by yourself or trying to buy from your, by yourself or from mm. Zillow, you would never right. know. You just right. think this house is cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like, like you said, as far as the flood zone, we've had a lot of that yes. in, this, in this area. So it's been crazy. So a lot of people, mm. even my coworkers, they were having issues with flooding um, in their basement. And they were being told that they would have to pay out of pocket, you know, to Ooh. repair it. So yeah. some of them didn't have, you know, flood insurance. So that could be very know, costly. They didn't want to pay, you know, extra for it. But, you know, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, who knows? Because you may not live in a flood zone. So it's, you know, in your mind, you're thinking, why spend that, you know, extra fund? You're already spending so much on a house. Why spend extra, you know, for flood insurance? But like you said, those are certain things the agent like yourself would know or would advise someone to continue to do. Yeah, that's true. So you still, in your in your mind, it's still a better option to to buy a house instead of renting. Because I a lot of people saying the rent prices are high in yeah. New Jersey. So it's rent like, would it make sense to just go and purchase a house? And it really depends on your situation because a house. Right requires a lot of maintenance itself. Right, that's true. You know, besides besides financial means, right. you know, it's a lot of maintenance and time. You have to make sure everything's correct, make sure the water's turned off before you leave, you know, make sure the yard yeah, is cut. Yeah. <laughs> now, what about yeah. condominium, though, where the, where the maintenance and things is, is taken care of? Is so that a smart route, or? Go ahead. I mean, it all depends on your situation, because condominiums require HOA fees most of the time. Mm. So that can be, you know, anywhere from two fifty to seven fifty a month, just wow. for living room. Yeah. So I mean, it's like having a house, yeah. but you're paying somebody to cut the lawn. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I hear people say that they're like, "Oh, I love condos." You know, they're like, "Oh, I don't want a house because I don't want the maintenance." Yeah, maintenance could be a lot on a, on one person, especially. Right. If in the long run, 
You're mm-hmm. always going to make money buying a home. Because usually as soon mm-hmm. as you move in, you hopefully you have right. equity right away. And you can always right. borrow against some equity. Yeah. That's true. Now, like, what's the importance of listings? Is, is that more for you as an agent or is that something that a regular person can can do as well? And so you can list your own home. Okay. But the problem with that is that 80% of the market is controlled by real estate agents. Wow. So when people go to buy a home, 80% mm. chance they're going to use a real estate agent to buy it. Right. And they're right. not going to look at your house. So what's called a for sale by owner. I like mm-hmm. to target those clients sometimes because they don't have the resources that I have to actually sell their home. Mm. If they do, they might sell it short. They might be losing 20,000 or 40,000 just because they think it's a shorter route or they're saving money. Mm. So the end point is to contact you. Culture. Oh, sure. <laughs> now, what is your, your, your daily activities consist of? That's what I love because every day is different. Um, some days I go as far down Jersey as almost Atlantic City. Some mm-hmm. days I go as far as my corner. <laughs> <You Yeah. know? laughs> so. As long as it's a house to be sold. So. Yes. You know, there, there's properties everywhere, but every day is different. And every day mm-hmm. is challenging, but I love it right. because every day I learn something new. Yes. Now, do you work with just housings or do you do um, apartment buildings as well? I can do pretty much anything. Okay. It's really what I target and what I, what's asked of me. Mm-hmm. Um, I do a lot of favors for investors sometimes. I will help them rent out their apartments or buildings. Okay. I do look for places, properties for investors. Sometimes they are buildings. So I right. pretty much try to do as many things as I can. You know, I, I don't want to be a, a one niche person. I like to cover everything and try to uh, learn in, along the process. Right. But the real estate field is, is so big. Like I've had people tell me that there's so many areas. Cause I've been thinking about this for a while myself. I, you know how I've just been all over doing different things. So I haven't <laughs> got into it exactly as fast as I would up until now. But I have people tell me it's a large field that you can get into different areas, as you were saying, investments. So how would one get into that? Like, say, if you want to just rent out apartments, almost like an Airbnb, you just want to purchase apartments just to rent out. Like, how would one get into that if they don't want to go and, and, and you know, buy a house, if they just want to rent out rooms or apartments? Well, you mean as an investor? Well, I, I guess so, like, right? Like, as if you, if you want yeah. to be an investor. If they want to purchase properties, there are mm-hmm. plenty of means to do that. Uh, what okay. I do mostly is called sheriff sales. Okay. So yeah. Sheriff sales allow you to purchase properties at 20% down on the price. Mm-hmm. So if the price was $100,000 for a property, you mm-hmm. would only spend $20,000 to get the property. And wow. then it's called hard money to pay mm-hmm. for it, to fix it up. And then from there, you can go and make your money and finance it. Right. And I think people forget about that part, that you got to put money into fixing up and, you know, renovating, you know, a house Mm -hmm. apartment before you can actually proceed with selling it. Yes. (laughs) Everyone's not built for you. I'll be honest. Right, right. And I like to gauge everybody when I first Mm -hmm. meet them to see how serious they are. And if you're not that right. serious, then you shouldn't be investing. You know, there, there's uh-huh. other ways to make money, but it, I can help you no matter what you want to do. But if you're not right. serious and committed to it, I won't do it because my goal is to make everybody happy. Yes. I'm looking into that myself, so I would need some some help because <laughs> yeah. I know I know nothing about it. Like, you know, I hear people say all the time, invest, invest, invest in, you know, buildings, apartments and you know, large buildings. And I'm just like, well, how do you, how do you get started? You know, in that. So I definitely know to connect with you. What's up? Thank you. We have more, more viewers joining. What's up? So they, you know, that's, it's very good to see people come on because I, that tells me that people do have an interest in buying homes, especially in our age, you know, 25, we hear people, <laughs> we hear people all the time say that they want to buy homes. You know, people are, you know, getting married, you know, starting families and things. So now their minds, you know, are into, you know, starting 
that part of their life buying a house and it seems like a challenge for a lot of you know young people under the age of 40 so they're all trying to figure out how they can get to that that next step and like i said you know i'm glad you mentioned that credit is not always a, a factor because i hear people say that all the time that they they don't want to sign they don't want to get a loan they don't want to do anything of that nature because their credit is bad so they just don't do it you know they just stay you know stuck in that you know that one position so it's good to know there's other ways around it you don't have to focus so much on the fact that you have you know terrible you know terrible or not so you know great credit so that's you know a good thing i think for people to know okay. and i just think people just need to be encouraged to step out of their comfort zone for sure i really do think people need to do that especially when it comes to you know buying a, you know a house you know you just have to just go out on a limb but i also think you got to be prepared as well like you were yeah. saying earlier you don't rush into just buying you know the first first house you see you know on the market unless it's mine yeah. <laughs> and you guys heard that, so you got to make sure before you even think about it, don't do no Zillow, no Trulia, no nothing. Make sure you guys contact Culture Estate Professor Scott Valentine. Like I said, we go way back. Like I said, I'm not going to say how far back, but <laughs> it's back, you know, Ren and Stimpy time. <laughs> so we go all the way back to Rugrats, I would say. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we go way back to this. So I definitely trust, you know, your opinion. And like I said, I hear a number of people not only want to buy houses, but that want to get into to into real estate. So how how does one join culture estate? Now that I'm talking about it, how would one become part of that? Well, we do have what's called mastermind meetings every Monday on okay. Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, feel free to watch those. You can you follow the page culture estate. Okay. Uh, those are definitely educational. They'll let you know what's mm -hmm. going on, kind of some of our techniques that we use. That'll give you an idea of, you know, how much work we put in, what goes into actually being an agent piece right. by piece. Um, but the, the process of becoming an agent, you have to go to school. There are mm -hmm. tons of schools out there. Um, you can choose schools that fit your schedule. Right. And, yeah, so it, it's a lot of studying involved. And you have to really be serious about it because <laughs> the agent, the test to become a real estate agent is four hours long. Oh, child, let so me you get can up. Imagine how much studying is involved. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy, child. <laughs> <laughs> four hours is this, that's kind of long now, but I mean, if that's what you want to do, you'll do it. Yes. You know, yeah. regardless of you know how many hours. And by the time you get to the test, I would think you'd be prepared enough you know, to, to take the exam, so. Yes, I mean, also, you know, if you want to get your feet wet, mm -hmm. you can come work, out, work with me. I'll take you through an open house or show you the, the ropes, mm -hmm. the good stuff. And if you want to try to do some cold calling, I'll let you learn a little bit. And I don't know, just feel free to ask me any questions, anybody. Yes, do you guys have any more questions, you know, to ask? Not to ask me, because I don't know now, <laughs> but to ask uh, Scott Valentine, because I, like I said, I do think it is important that, you know, especially within, you know, the black community and Latino community that we get out of renting all the time. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, we're, we're branching out, we're owning businesses now, so it's like, it only makes sense for us to go and start owning our own properties now. You know, if we can have our own business, we should be able to, to have our own house so that, like you said, equity we can say this is this is our home, you know. You know, when you're renting, yes, you know, it is your home, but it's it's not the same. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. really not the same as saying this is our, you know, our home, my home that you know I have, that's mine. That you know, really, you know, once you're once you're paying on it, that's it. You know, you're you're gonna be there. You know, God willing, you're able to continue, you know, paying your mortgage and and your taxes and things. I mostly grew up, you know, renting. So, you know, I'm used to that lifestyle as well as a number of, you know, African-American, we're used to just renting all the time, you know, just growing up. So for yeah. us, it's really a challenge because our parents didn't necessarily have, you know, homes. So now it's like we're basically that generation where we're learning everything that, you know, our parents didn't do. So we're learning how to do all these different things on our own and, and it's taking a lot and it's going to take us as a, a whole large group to come together like what we're doing tonight giving advice 
and, you know, tips because people really don't know. You know, like I said, yeah. I have friends who, like, they want to own homes, but they're just like, I don't know if I could. So yeah. that's, you know, I hear a lot of people say that. It's because, you know, what's, what's going on financially, people are scared to take that risk, I think. Yeah. You know, into homes. Yeah. But, but I think that... Mm -hmm. No, go yeah, ahead, Scott. It's just, uh, education. You know, there's right. a lot of free seminars all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a home for the first time, go to a first time home buyers organization right. or a first time home buyers seminar and learn as much as possible. Mm. So do you know of any that's gonna be coming up? Like local, like Essence or Union Counties? Um, if you look them up, I don't know personally right now, but I know okay. they're thrown all the time. Usually a loan officer will do them because they, okay. they give you the first steps. Mm. But if you want to get together and throw one, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that too. I might have to. I might have to do something like that because I feel like we need we need that push. People need to know that they have someone there that's been there that can help guide them. Yeah, because it's, it's always possible. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of information, and like I said, I hear young people all the time say they want to buy homes, they just don't know if they can afford it. So that's another thing. If people knew that it was within their budget or that someone will be willing to work with them with their incomes, I think they would be more open to taking that jump yeah. to home ownership instead of staying renting. Cause I want to get in a position where I'm renting out homes and yeah, apartments. Know. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm about. I don't want to just stay stuck because I do see people. I do see young people out here now starting to do that. They're yeah. starting to rent out apartments and, you know, they're not necessarily doing it alone. They're working with the right partners. And I think that's another thing, making sure you have the right team of people. You know, you guys yeah. come together, pull your money together, and you buy, yeah. you know, a large, you know, apartment building. Now you're all caking. Now you're all bringing yeah, in. You know what I'm saying? You're all bringing, you know, you get up 500000 a million, whatever, how much you guys yeah. pull together. And that's how things grow. You know, once you build that up, and then you move on, you know, to the next property. And I think that's how it, it should be so that something mm -hmm. happens, you know, you, you can tell somebody, I do have an apartment for you. They still got to pay rent. Yeah. You know, sometimes family and friends think if you get them apartment, I swear that happened mm -hmm. with you. They don't have to put no money up. I'm like, no, dog, like, come on. Like, you got to pay money. You can't just be up in the place like chilling. <laughs> Netflix and chilling and ain't paying no rent. Now, you still got to pay your rent. <laughs> Yeah, true. Oh, Javon, Javon says to get into investing in property, do you need to go to school? So he was no, asking that question. Okay. Not at all. Um, what I what I say most is just get out there. If you want to invest, there's always an investor event. Just look for local events, especially right. on Facebook. Just go to events, yes. meet people, shake hands. They'll invite you places, and then you'll learn a lot. Yes. yes. Oh, Scott, my mom has a question. She said, what about rent to own? Rent, she says, what about rent to own a house, Scott? Um, so, like if you're renting a house instead of, you know, yeah, I, buying I've it. I've seen that, seen that before. Uh, usually they require a large deposit. Mm. And there's a possibility of you losing that money when you walk away, if you decide to walk away. Wow, that's something. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you never really own the property until you fully pay for it. So if you're renting it, that's not the same as you purchasing it. No. Okay. You're you're agreeing to purchase the property. Like you're putting money into it, but it's yeah. not doing anything. It's not doing anything, yeah. Okay. So they might require a twenty percent down payment for that. Mm -hmm. And then you're paying your money wow. and say let's say six months down the line you lose your job. Mm -hmm. Right, you lose everything. Mm. So it's an option. I mean, if you're if you, if you want to do something like that, but mm -hmm. it's also it's also a risk involved in that. Okay, so you think it's just best just to go full force and just buy the house? And I pay. would. I mean, depending <laughs> on the circumstances, there's yeah. always a route to get a house. It might not be the house you want at that time, but you can always make a house into your own. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're saying just, you know, do your do your research and just go go ahead and buy the house and not stay. Give, give me a call first, and I'll give you my opinion. 
I should have known that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get started with uh, this investment Fridays I saw on your, your Instagram? Because I have seen people following you, and I've seen you've been getting a lot of likes now. So I said, oh, shoot, you're doing something. <laughs> you know, it's, it, yeah. it was, it's been a while, but uh, we do have right. a media marketing manager at Culture Estate, okay. and he does a pretty right. well job. So I figured I might as well use them. You know, I have some knowledge. I might as well share what I have. Right. Yeah, because yeah. I watch your videos and it's like they're short clips, but yet, you know, they're they seem fun and, you know, like you said, educational and it's you know it's cutting edge. It's put together really nice. Thank you. I actually watched the whole clip. <laughs> <laughs> Some other people, I click right off. Like I don't want to watch this. You know, it ain't about nothing. You know, it looks different. So, you know, appearance is important, too, and being able to catch people's attention. So I, that's what I love about Instagram, the fact that you can do that in a short time span. Because nowadays, people don't want to sit and watch for too long. They want to see something quick and yeah. right, you know, right to the point. So sometimes you got to get those little tidbits, you know, like Javon said, nuggets here and there. Yeah. You know, my mom, she said, thank you for sharing that to us. So that's Mama <laughs> Brown. Danita Shook Brown in the house. <laughs> What's up, um, Kenrick? So we got some of our peeps joining tonight. Columbia has. Hello. <laughs> Shout out to CHS in the house. And that's what we have to do. Like I said, come together, teach, teach excuse me, teach each other, educate. And that's that's how we're gonna grow. That's how we're all going to get to where you know we wanna be in life. So what's what's next what's next for you? I know you probably got open house. <laughs> right? What time is it now? <laughs> well, you know I just got back home from one, but uh Right, I know. Yeah. You know, right now I have to do more follow ups, write more emails, but you know, right. you just have to stay busy and stay educated. Never stay right. stagnant. So things is things change often in real estate. Constantly. Yeah. Constantly. You have to be aware of any laws, any codes that might have changed. Mm -hmm. you know, um, it, it's just a constant struggle to, to stay up to date with everything, but mm -hmm. you have to do it. Well, that's pretty much with any field. Yes, you true. Know, if you're an attorney, you know, doctor, you have to keep up with, like you said, laws and codes. And it's, yeah. it, can, it can be a lot, but that's, that's, you know, that's the name of the game. You just yeah. have to keep up. Even what I'm doing in media, you know, technology changes. I have to try to keep up with different things and test <laughs> different things. Like we were doing the Zoom earlier. Yeah, which was I what the hell that was about. I just zoomed my ass right back out. But, um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just keeping up with different things. You know, I have a YouTube and all, you know, all this stuff. So it's just trying to keep up with all the trends, what's popular, how to catch people. Because it's important because everybody's on video all the time. You know, yeah. everybody's always live streaming or catching live streams and they don't even watch regular television anymore. You know, people cut cable now and all that. So it's like you have to keep I don't care what field you're in. If you want to, you know, gain popularity, if you want to sell, you know, obviously this is the seller's, you know, job. You have to be able to reach people and keep them engaged and have them interested in what you're actually doing. Because you never know one day they may look may be looking for, to buy a house and the first name they're going to have is, you know, Professor Scott. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's because they may have just watched your Instagram video of, you you know, giving investment tips. And now they're just like, you know, I like what he's about. He's about his knowledge. He's consistent. He's professional. And that's going to make people want to, you know, work with you. So I want to congratulate you as well. Me. You know, for, motiv <laughs> you know, for motivating others because like I said people do see you even if they don't tell you that they see you they do see what you know you're doing and it's important for people to see you going out and doing your thing you know on your own you may not think it influences you know other people but people do see you do things and that that can push them to go and say okay if he's doing his thing I see him going hard maybe I can push myself more and whatever it is that they're doing so that's all you can do is just continue doing you basically no, I appreciate it. Like I said earlier, like you inspire me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah, with your positivity. But, you know, I, I, do. I do try to be, you know, positive even when I'm going through my own things because it's like I have to push through that myself. I can't stay stuck, you know, in whatever yeah. negative feeling I'm in. You know, I don't I don't like that stuff. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I like to, to move forward and, you know, think positive and find solutions. I don't like to stay stuck in problems because that's not doing anything. Just mm-hmm. staying, you know, stuck in, in that. You know, you need to find ways to um, to get out of it. So that's, the, you know, that's all I can do. People always tell me I'm hustling and stuff. And I'm like, that's just because that's what it is. You know, you just yeah, sometimes, you, you know, I mean, I want to be, you know, go out doing certain things, but I'll do it because it's like you're not always going to have to be doing things. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's you're, you're, it's you're just in that position at this particular moment and you have to work hard in order to not work as hard later. Yeah, it's true. I always tell people put the while you you know while you're young in your twenties and thirties, even your forties, this is the time for you to get yourself set up so that you're not struggling, you know, later on in life. You know, there's a number of people now, fifties and sixties, they don't own their own homes because they mm-hmm. weren't preparing themselves before that. So now they're renting or relying on you know government you know assistance, and you know how that you know that can be. You know, they love to take your money away, you know, from you. You know, you start off with a certain amount of money and next thing you know, it's just, you know, six months later, they took a $50 on your check. <laughs> now, you know, $100 and now you're, you're struggling. You're already struggling. Now you're really struggling with less money. And I see a number of elderly people like that. Not elderly, but, you know, like our parents age and, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's I don't want to be in that position. I don't want to see any of my friends in that position where they're struggling and they don't own their own home. They're just out here paying, you know, rent to somebody else. And when they pass, there's nothing to pass on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, if you have just an apartment, you're not able to pass that on, you know, to your, your children. And I think that's important, you know, as far as a house is having something to pass on. You know, if something happens to you, you know, that your child, you know, you know that they have a place to live, basically. Yeah, that's big. That they, they have a house. They're not going to be necessarily put out on the street because you didn't have, you know, a home and things. So and that's another good thing for all you parents out there. I ain't talking about me yet, but, <laughs> you know, pray, pray for me, Scott. But, um, <laughs> you know, for those of you parents out there, you know, it is really important to be able to pass on to, you know, the next generation. What's up? Shout out to Kay Valentine. What's up? <laughs> Yeah, you got your family is, is supporting you tonight, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, but you know it was a really good conversation. So, do you see your 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 son becoming the the next professor in line? <laughs> uh, he's, he's not talking yet, so I don't I don't think so. Hey, you never okay. it's never too early to start. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Whatever he wants yeah. to do, let him do. Yeah, I I think you already started now. <laughs> I think you yeah, already started yeah. the process for him. You're just not telling nobody. So I know it's lies. <laughs> you don't want to put your business out there. So, <laughs> so how can people contact you, or just follow you if they're just interested in seeing what you're about? Definitely, um, Facebook page Scott Valentine Culture Estate. Mm-hmm. That gives my most current updates, rentals, um, just information yes. in general. Definitely, uh, investment tips whatever I'm doing in the area, and you can contact me for any questions you have. Yeah, so you guys hear that? Make sure you follow him. I know all you guys are on Facebook, obviously, (laughs) Ah. and on Instagram, so you definitely should hit him up. Whether or not you're interested in buying a house, I'm sure one day you will, whether it's, you know, six months from now or a year from now, you want to be able to be following the right people, the people who are going to guide you in the right direction, who's not going to mislead you, not going to take you for your money. So that's, you know, that's what he's about. He's the professor. (laughs) So, you know, he's an old friend of mine, so I can vouch for him and tell you that he's about his business. Like I said, I watch your Instagrams, and I do see that you are out here, you know, working hard, which is great. You know, you actually have to put effort into succeeding. People think things are just going to come easy. I'm like, no, you, you can have all the talent and desire in the world, but you still got to put work in. Oh, yeah, for I don't sure. care if you're a singer, if you do real estate, if you're, you know, a janitor, you still have to put work into what you're doing. Yeah. You know, you just have to always, you know, try to um, be be the best that you can be, as cheesy as that sounds. But, <laughs> you know, 
No, it makes not, sense. Not even about the art, but you got to actually be the best at what it is that you're doing at that particular moment. So I know you got to go. Like I said, I know you just left an open house and things. So I appreciate you tonight coming on, giving your advice. I'm going to put the two videos together. It's always <laughs> something with my Facebook lives be having a mind of its own, y'all. Like, Excuse it's just me. keep going and going. <laughs> It does. It doesn't listen to me anymore. It just does what it wants. So I'm going to put, you know, the video together and then I'm going to provide a link, you know, for people who haven't been able to come on tonight who may want to watch later. So I'm going to do that to support you because I got to support you, my friend. So thank you. And keep yeah. inspiring me, please. I love your videos. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. So I guess we're going to sign off. I appreciate everybody that came on tonight. If you have any more questions, you can, of course, comment underneath this video as well as the initial video. So I'm going to keep both up so people can watch <laughs> both of those. I want people to be like, what this child is doing? So we just did a two-part video. So that's what we're going to say. This is part two of real estate, culture, estate. Mr. <laughs> Scott Valentine. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, it's so yes. great. So I appreciate again, you guys for tonight. I hope everybody has a great night. I hope you have a great night as well, Scott, with your son and your family mm -hmm. in your house. <laughs> I wish you the best. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to sign off, okay? All right. Have a good night. All right. Good night. Good night.